The art of fighting in hockey is sacred. Fighting your own teammate, well, that can be a catalyst for great things. In 2018, Robert Bortuzzo fought Zach Sanford in practice, and this was a turning point in a Stanley Cup winning season for the Blues. This year in training camp, Connor Garland got into it with Dakota Joshua. The two almost came to blows, but over the course of the season, became two thirds of one of the best third lines in hockey. Last week, Connor Garland got into it with Philip Ronick in practice. Afterwards, he stated, I'm not the most talented guy. I'm undersized. You gotta play hard. You gotta compete when you're a guy like me. Though small in stature, Connor Garland is akin to a spark, igniting a roaring flame in the heart of this organization. His fiery determination fuels the team's passion. Canuck fans this spring will hope to draw parallels to another undersized winger who made crucial playoff contributions. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Rick Tockett needed someone to provide a spark for Elias Pettersson, who since signing his contract had 4 points in 6 games. Who better to assign to his wing than Garland, the spark plug? Here's how the Canucks chose to line up, and I'm sure you guys have already seen the highlights but there were some very encouraging signs from last night's game. Signs that bode well for the Canucks down the stretch drive. Before I get into my breakdown of the game, make sure you hit subscribe. This video may as well be a Connor Garland appreciation post. He was a pit bull in this game. Here on the first goal, he does an excellent job of pulling up in front of Levi. Take a look here. He quickly glances down to see where his feet are, making sure he is not in the blue paint and in danger of taking an interference penalty. The Sabres for some reason leave him alone. I guess sometimes it is beneficial to be undersized. He literally goes under the radar. Hughes throws the puck on net and Garland does the rest. On the Pedersen goal, if there was such thing as a tertiary assist, then Garland would have received one. He does an excellent job of recovering after the 2 on 1, spotting the trailer Hughes, who gets the puck to Miller, and this is precisely why people want Miller on the half wall during the power play. He can wreak havoc with his heavy shot, and he can also make plays like this to Besser, who unfortunately was snake bit all night and could not execute. I would be remiss to not point out that Scott Stevens came out of retirement to lace them up for the Canucks. Actually, hold up! That is our captain Quinn Hughes sending a warning to the rest of the league. Keep your head up on crossing the Canucks blue line. Link in the description for my piece on Quinn Hughes. When all was said and done, the Canucks came out with a 3-2 victory. Now, I want to highlight the team's commitment to structure and defense. Here is a map of where the Buffalo Sabres score most of their goals from. Although they are below league average in goals per game, they are very efficient from the slot, above league average. They like working the puck down low and finding one of their big guys, Tuck, Thompson, or Cousins in the slot for opportunities. This is where they got their shots at 5 on 5 from. As you can see, the Canucks did an excellent job of taking away the center of the ice. Most of the Sabre shots came from the point or the left circle. The grey in the middle indicates missed shots, which includes blocks. So even when the Sabres were able to penetrate into the middle, the Canucks were able to get in front of pucks before they reached Casey DeSmith. Now take a look at the Canucks shot chart. It is much more concentrated in front of the net and in the low slot area. This is what you want your chart to look like, especially heading into the playoffs. You need to get the puck into high danger areas, fight for every square inch of ice, and score greasy goals. Somehow, Connor Garland was not one of the three stars, but I want to highlight a comment he made after the game. He stated, There's not much I can help Petey with. He's a terrific player. I'd like to give Garland his roses. He provides a spark to every line that he plays on, whether he's with Dak and Bluger, Lindholm, or Pedersen. He is the straw that stirs the drink, and as a hockey player, he is conditioned to not take any credit. But credit is due. And I'm glad the Garland trade rumors are behind us because I feel that Garland is going to be indispensable in the playoffs. That's all I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed my breakdown of the game, please subscribe for raw, unfiltered hockey talk. None of that clickbait nonsense on my channel. Until next time, cheers.